Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and today I'm going to review one of the Vatan smart home products that uh, I basically created a sneak preview in a couple of videos before and this is the Zigbee switch and well not just any Zigbee switch because well probably you can't have from the wiring but this is a no neutral wire Zigbee switch so if I s flip it around uh, from the labels you can see that they only have live labels so there is no neutral connection so this is an ideal switch if you want to replace old existing light sockets in your wall and if you don't have a neutral wire in your wall so what I'm going to be talking in this video is you know how this device works how you can wire it how you can set it up and also how you can you know set it up with this uh, RF battery operated switch and we are going to see how it behaves and works in a, a Sonoff app and also in the TUI app. Because it's Zigbee, it should be able to communicate with any Zigbee you know, 3.0 network. So I just have these two um, systems at home and these two hubs at home. But uh, it is advertised that it works with smart things as well. And if you have a homebrew uh, Zigbee to MQTT nodes, it should work with that as well. So you should be able to integrate it with this with Home Assistant or any other DIY home automation system. And also I got a confirmation that even though this is live, you know, no neutral wire or single live wire switch, this also acts as a Zigbee router. So this would be able to forward messages to battery operated node away from your Zigbee hub. I want to make this review video quick because I think we have a lot to cover. Let me just do the unboxing because while it's going to be very simple, the main switch itself comes in this generic box. Um, you will see that both of my Vatten devices, they have the same box and it shows here on the, on the side that this is a two gang version. So there is one, two, three gang version. Well, there is also four gang version probably in some versions and there is a Wi-Fi which I will be reviewing in a separate video and this is the uh, Vive, uh, well this is actually the Zigbee, I just picked up the wrong box. So this is the Zigbee plus the RF version but there is again the Wi-Fi version available and there are colors between black and white so obviously I have the white one. And just like with many other switches that we have seen, uh, a lot of, you know, Son of TX and the T2 series, these are touch switches. So these circles are the touch sensitive areas. And if I touch them, well, it's not connected at the moment. That's how you operate the switch. I don't know if you have preference to physical switches, which actually toggle or touch switches. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of touch with touch switches, but they definitely work. And I think they have a different type of aesthetic. As you can see, it's, uh, uh, it has this glass, a little bit chamfered top. I haven't peeled off the protected film. And uh, there are two circles and there are some very faint uh, LED lights behind them. So if the switch is turned on, then it, the circle illum illuminates in red. And if it just connected to the uh, network, then it illuminates in blue. But the difference is that obviously your RF switch doesn't know whether your actual switch is turned on and off. So this will only illuminate red when you press it. And, but the other one would show the actual state of the output. So if it's, you know, it's on, it's blue. If it's off, then it doesn't, it doesn't shine. But this is a very faint uh, indicator light, so definitely you are all going to see it during the day, but it will help you to locate the switch during the night. Well, uh, at least the, uh, you know, the wired one, not the RF one. And within the box, you receive the switch. It was uh, wrapped separately just to protect it. And there is this protected film on the glass surface as well. And there is a single leaflet documentation. So it is, it is really basic but it just talks about the, you know, the general things, how you wire it up, which I'm also going to show you separately. And other, other than that, I think the specs are fairly generic. So the, you know, on the outputs, you have a two amp relay, which is, 
you know, very typical for these Wi-Fi switches. So on 220 or 240 watts, you can switch up to like 500 watts and on 120, it's, uh, yeah, it says should be less than 300 watts. But I think for lights, that's, uh, you know, a fairly typical load and should be more than enough. And you can see the wiring diagram for a two gang switch and of course, sorry, a three gang switch and for two gang and one gang, well, it's just, you know, one or two less bulbs. So it's uh, nothing special. And the remote comes in this uh, remote control box. And again, there is no documentation. There is, oh, that, sorry, there is also a very simple documentation. And uh, you can see the various versions here. So again, you can get one, two or three gang versions and white and black from this particular device. And probably the last word that I want to add about well, both of these switches is you find these uh, tabs here. So you can put a screwdriver in and, and then just lift this cover up. And this is how you would need to mount this on the wall. So you take the back cover, you see the screw holes, you mount it on the wall. And then when it's on the wall, you just basically slide this uh, back, back into place and click it in. And pretty much the same happens here as well. So that's how you, you, you see the screw holes here. So this is how you would mount it in the, uh, on the wall. So now let's cover the wiring. I think maybe I'm just going to zoom out a little. You see some other things on the, um, on the desk. I'm just going to put this away because, well, obviously this is battery operated. And I'm, I'm not sure if you have seen or not, but it just runs on two CR2032 coin cell batteries. And well, this is obviously mains powered. And as you can see here, I tried to use the European color coding. So black is life and then blue is neutral. And as you can see, only black wire goes into the switch. So there is one main black wire. So that is the fixed black wire, which I mean, for testing, I'm just using a pigtail, but that's the one which comes for your breaker box. It goes into the L connection, the live connection, and then the the different gangs that you switch goes out from the L1, L2 and L3 and obviously uh, non, not all of them would be populated uh, based on the model. So now I have the L1 and the L3 populated on the two gang switch. On the L2 there is, there is no contact, there is no screw in the middle one. So obviously on a one gang you would just have L1 and the three gang version you would have all three of them. And that, these are the, uh, the wires that you connect to your uh, light sockets and the other side of the light socket goes to the neutral and that completes the circuit and because it's a single wires uh, switch you need a capacitor and you need to install that capacitor across one of your lights or one of your loads it doesn't matter which one it just needs to be installed on one of them so you can see that i just uh, uh, bridged it in between the two connections you have to do that in your light socket as well and to be honest, that's pretty much it. So the light switch is connected at the moment. It is not even paired to a Zigbee hub, but I can already operate it from here. So I touch one of the circles and obviously the light uh, switch is on. So maybe it becomes a little bit more visible that I only have one of the gang on, but uh, on this one, there is a small red LED and here there is none. And I already have the, the RF remote paired to it. And pairing is really, really easy because all you need to do is just to hold on to the gang that you want to pair to. So for example, this one, and then you switch and hold for five seconds. You hear the beep and then you touch the RF sensor and now it is paired. And as you can see, I can operate the output from the main switch or the RF switch as well. And I've already done the same for the other switch as well. So you can see that it works. So pairing it to the main unit only takes a couple of seconds. And if you want to delete the pairing, you tap and hold the button for like 10 seconds until you hear two beeps. And that those are those two beeps are the confirmation that the pairing has been deleted. So, I mean, literally it only takes a couple of seconds and now you can take the switch away and then put it somewhere where you want to operate these lights from. 
Okay, so let me pair this device to my Sonoff Zigbee Hub. As you can see, I am in the Sonoff app and I just found my Zigbee device. Oh, there is a new firmware available, I should update it. So now all I can do is I just, um, you know, open this page. Oh, by the way, if you don't know what the uh, Sonoff Zigbee bridge is, I have a separate video on that. But now I can just click on add and this is going to find the new uh, my Zigbee switch and it's going to pair it with the Zigbee Hub. And one device is found so this is good and i'm just going to rename this as uh, it should be the last one yeah so as you can see i can already operate it from here and i can go into the settings and then rename this to i think what i'm going to use is and i'm just going to call it Svetan zigbee dual because actually there is a Wi-Fi version as well. And I can uh, have different names for the channel one and the channel two, I'm not going to do that. I can put it into a specific room here and uh, that's pretty much it. So if I go to my living room, then maybe somewhere in the top, I have this ZN Dual and I can operate it. And to be honest, it is a simple switch. So it's not going to do an awful lot. So we have a couple of options here. You can turn all the channels on or you can turn all the channels off. You can have different schedules. So a specific day, sorry, hour and minute of the day. And you can uh, specify which day of the week you can um, turn this device on and off. Let's say on nine o'clock, I want channel one to turn on. So every Tuesday and Wednesday, nine o'clock, the first channel is going to come on. And then you can have many of these schedules. And uh, for the Wi-Fi version, I was told by some of the, these schedules are actually stored in the device. So even if you lose internet connection, these schedules are going to work. And the other one is the timer. So simple timer functionality. Let's say I have one of the channels on and I know I want to turn it off after half an hour, like in the TV sleep mode. I can just set, you know, 30 minutes off on channel two. And now I enable this. So my channel two is going to turn off at 9.59, which is in half an hour. So, and you can see that there is a schedule and there is a timer which is active. And in the settings, there is not an awful lot that you can do. Um, we already have seen how you can rename and change the location of the device. And you also have some logs. So you can see when the uh, various channels got turned on or turned off. And um, it also shows your ID. So if you share the device with the other users, you would be able to tell who operated the switch. I think this is pretty much all that uh, needs to be said about the general operation of the switch. We can go into the scenes and we can see what uh, is supported in the scenes. So we can build triggers on this device. So if I select smart device and wet and dual, I can select change one and change two. And I have two options on and off. So I can create a scene which will automatically execute whenever I turned channel one or channel two on and off. Um, I mean, that's what you would expect from a simple switch. And then on the action side, I can again select smart device and the Zigbee, Zigbee Dual, and I can specify that if the scene executes because maybe, you know, some other device gets triggered or a temperature sensor is sensing an over temperature, then I can specify whether I want the ch either channel one or channel two to turn on or off or just keep the current value, which means that, you know, that doesn't change. So this is what you can get in the scenes. And as a next step, let's do the pairing to the Tuya Smart app. And here I'm also going to find my Tuya Zigbee Hub, which is the BWIS1. I made a separate video on that, and I believe IS1 is not sold anymore, so there is a newer version, which is called IS10. But the process should be exactly the same. I already have a couple of devices. <laughs> All of them appear to be offline now, but I'm just going to click on add device and I just make sure that the yeah, LED is blinking. And now my Tuya Zigbee Hub should be able to find this Zigbee device and pair it. And the device is now paired. And I'm just going to rename this. So here I'm also going to give it the name. Um, I'm going to use Wet and Dual. Zigbee Dual. Yeah, that's it. 
Okay, and then save and then done. I should have put it into one of the rooms, but doesn't matter. And by the way, now I have turned the lights on, so maybe you can see the very faint blue LED that it is, um, you know, turned on and maybe the red one. But I really had to turn the lights off for that. Sorry, off, not on. So let me turn the lights back on. Okay, and if I go back to my app, then if I select all devices, then I can see my ZN Dual and uh, it gets a, a really nice dark theme. I like it. And uh, we have Switch 1 and Switch 2. There is a prompt which says if you want to rename the Switch names, you have a long press on them. But that's how you operate and it works just fine. And similarly to Sonoff, you have a button to turn all of them on or turn all of them off. And you can also set timers both to switch one and switch two. So at certain day of the week, you want the device to automatically turn on. So Thursday and Fridays at 9.50, you want switch one to actually turn on. And I don't want additional notification on that. So I can just save that. And this is one of your schedules and you can have multiple of these schedules created for both of your uh, switches. And the countdown is a manual countdown. So I switched uh, to or gang two on and let's say I want it to automatically turn off after 50 minutes. So uh, that's ah, anyway, 51 minutes. And now the device will automatically go off in 51 minutes. So this is like a manual timer that you can set any time when you are using it. So it's a manual thing. And that's pretty much it. If I go into the device details, I can, you know, rename it, put it into a different location, change the icon. I can also share the device with other users and also create a group. So I can link these devices into a group. So if you have two of these Wi-Fi switches, I can just link them together. And then when I turn one of them on, then both of them comes on. But if you're using the RF switch, then you don't have to do the grouping because with the RF switch, you are specifically linking the RF switch to a Wi-Fi switch. And by the way, you can link multiple RF switches into one single Wi-Fi switch. And also you can link one RF switch to multiple Wi-Fi or Zigbee switches. So that definitely works. So here, this is what you can do in uh, grouping. And now what I want to show you is what we have in the smart options. So if I want to create a new scene, I click on plus and most probably I can create a scene based on if the device status changes. And yes, so I have switch one and switch two. So I can create an automation if any of these uh, gangs are getting turned on which could be me pressing on this button or actually using the RF button or of course the app as well. So that would activate the same automation. And if I want to check what's available on the action side and then run device Z and dual, we can see pretty much the same. So I can turn the switch or the output on, I can turn it off or I can just toggle it. So if it was on, then it goes off and vice versa, which is actually quite nice. If you have such a device, uh, which only has like a single action, you can use that to toggle the output here. So I think that was pretty much it. What I wanted to say about this uh, VATAN no neutral wire Zigbee two gang switch. If you are interested in this product, I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description, but I think that would be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.